close with this point. Not just for pregnant women, but for all Americans, today starts a new era of very, 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 very big government, very intrusive government. Hey again, everyone. It is 5 o'clock in the East. I'm Alicia Menendez, in for Nicole Wallace. And that was our colleague, Rachel Maddow, with a frightening prediction on the night the Supreme Court overturned Roe, stripping away the constitutional right to abortion access. She was right. In the years since, Republican-led state governments have invented new and disturbingly intrusive ways to assert control over a woman's private medical decisions. And it's led to this. Texas resident Kate Cox who is currently 20 weeks pregnant with a baby that will not survive, had to beg a judge today for a desperately necessary abortion in order to preserve her health, to keep her baby from suffering, and to enable her to have children in the future. Now, just let that sink in. A woman in a medical emergency had to beg a court for health care due to Texas's anti-abortion laws. And to be clear, it is, in fact, an emergency. Kate Cox's attorney noted in the hearing today, her health is so fragile that in the time since the case was filed on Tuesday and the hearing today, Kate had gone to the emergency room for a fourth time. The judge granted her request, noting on the verge of tears that, quote, the idea that Miss Cox wants desperately to be a parent and this law might cause her to lose that ability is shocking and would be a genuine miscarriage of justice. It remains to be seen if the state of Texas will fight the judge's order today, as they have every time court in that state has sided to protect women and their health and bodily autonomy. But in a statement today, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton issued what can only be interpreted as a threat to Kate and to her doctors. Quote, the temporary restraining order granted by the Travis County District Judge purporting to allow an abortion to proceed will not insulate hospitals, doctors, or anyone else from civil and criminal liability for violating Texas's abortion laws. This includes first-degree felony prosecutions and civil penalties of not less than $100,000 for each violation. The order does not enjoin actions brought by private citizens, nor does it prohibit a district or county attorney from enforcing Texas's pre-Roe abortion laws against Kate's doctor or anyone else. The temporary restraining order will expire long before the statute of limitations for violating Texas's abortion laws expires. That is the top lawyer in the state of Texas threatening a private citizen in a medical crisis, putting a bounty on the head of her doctors. So... You can get a clear understanding of what that would mean for her. This is what Kate has said about the horror she is currently living through. Quote, it is not a matter of if I will have to say goodbye, but when. I do not want to continue the pain and suffering that has plagued this pregnancy. I do not want to put my body through the risks of continuing this pregnancy. I do not want to continue until my baby dies in my belly or I have to deliver a stillborn baby are one where life will be measured in hours or days full of medical tubes and machinery. I do not want my baby to arrive in this world only to watch her suffer a heart attack or suffocation. I desperately want the chance to try for another baby and want to access the medical care now that gives me the best chance at another baby. That is where we start this hour with Molly Duane. She is the attorney for Kate Cox. Also with us, the president and CEO of Reproductive Freedom for All, Minita Miraju. Plus with me at the table, host of Fast Politics podcast and Vanity Fair special correspondent, Molly Zhang Fast. Molly Duane, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. I know that you cannot give us details about Kate's health care for very obvious reasons. Can you, though, give us a sense of how she is doing? Well, Kate is a mother of two and a proud Texan who has lived her entire life in Texas, who wants to be able to access the health care that she desperately needs in her home community. And despite everything, the ups and downs of today, she remains hopeful and optimistic. And that is what gives me faith in humanity. Molly, what was it like to watch your client be targeted by Ken Paxton? Unfortunately, this isn't the first time that I have seen the att attorney general of a state personally attack a woman in need of desperate health care. He did it again and again and again in the Zorowski versus Texas case mm -hmm. when we had each of the plaintiffs testify in open court, accused them of having fertility problems that there were that were their own fault, accused them of 
being responsible for what happened to them and for not suing their doctors, doctors who held their hands crying, saying, my hands are tied by the state of Texas. And so once again, while I was not surprised, I was shocked. It is always shocking to see the top attorney for a state in this country treat its citizens with such callous disregard. Molly, you said this during today's hearing, quote, only when a woman is about to die may an abortion be allowed. In other words, the medical exception is no exception at all. It is clearly too dangerous for her to be pregnant in Texas. Talk about what Kate's case shows us about the law more broadly. This is really important for people to understand. Every time folks talk about there are exceptions for reasonable interpretations of the law where patients really need abortions, don't worry, those patients are getting the abortions. They're not. Ms. Cox is not getting the abortion care that she needs in Texas. And more to the point, the attorney general of her state is saying that he should decide when her, her life is closest to death. When her life is on the line, he gets to decide, not her doctors. And that should be shocking and alarming to every citizen of this state. Just to put a fine point on that, Molly, in the hearing you referenced some particularly disgusting passages from the state's filing attempting to undercut just how critical Kate's situation is. Talk about how far as a country we have sunk after Dobbs, where women are now being forced to beg a court for health care. Well, I want to be really clear about something. This did not start with Dobbs. This is a decades-long campaign that anti-abortion politicians have been waging in this country. Roe v. Wade was never enough. There are so many patients in this country who never had access to abortion care under those restrictions. Yet now we find ourselves in truly a dystopian environment where a patient in the middle of a health emergency is coming to court saying, please, let my doctor save my life, save my fertility. And the state of Texas, with a resounding voice, posting on Twitter, sending letters to the hospitals, letters about this yeah. position, targeting her personally. I truly don't know what to say. Well, I, I want to play a little bit of Kate's experience in her own words. Take a listen. It's a hard time, um, you know, even with you know, being hopeful with um, the decision that came from the hearing this morning, there's there's still, we're going through the loss of a, of a child. There's no outcome here that I take home my healthy baby girl, you know? So um, it's hard, you know, just, uh, you know, grief. But um, I think that, um, you know, joy and grief can coexist and there's, you know, more, there's moments of joy. I said, I'm really grateful for my wonderful two children that I have and my wonderful family. And, um, you know, it's a moment of sadness, but we really have a wonderful life here in our, in our home state. And so, you know, I just try to count my blessings. That sound is from NBC Nightly News. Just a, a reminder, Molly, that even a win here is still a loss. The fact that we filed the lawsuit at all is a huge loss in many ways. And I just want people to put themselves in Kate's shoes. Do you want your state deciding how you and your family choose to grieve? Because that is what is happening. The state of Texas is saying, we don't care about women's lives. We don't care about families or pregnant people. All we care about is forced birth. Even when in Ms. Cox's situation, it's going to mean that she will have to carry to pregnancy a term that may, be, that may result in a stillborn baby or a child who will suffer for the few short minutes of her life. And I know that that is graphic, but it is real. And people need to understand that this is happening every single day. And while Ms. Cox was able to come to court today, 99% of people in this situation are not, and they are suffering every day at these cruel and inhumane abortion bans, which take away our agency as individuals and harm real families in Texas and around the country.